Welcome to video six, and I think the last uh, video screencast for 2402 blood vessels lecture. All right, so we've moved on to how to regulate blood flow at a uh, local level. So this is what they call intrinsic uh, within the organ. So the stomach has its own blood flow. It has its own ability to control it. The liver has its own ability to control blood flow, etc. cetera. Uh, that adds on on top of the whole system being controlling the blood. So let's, uh, and by the way, this is called auto, generally called auto regulation of blood flow to an organ. Auto meaning self regulation. So metabolic controls, that's if you don't have enough oxygen, well, you're gonna respond, you're gonna visodilate, right? So if my um, muscles aren't getting, if my leg muscles aren't getting enough oxygen, they're gonna vasodilate, and that means more blood's gonna go there. Uh, Nitrous oxide is one of the key promoters of this. Myogenic controls. Now, myo is muscle, so this is the smooth, mu smooth muscle in the vessels. If blood pressure starts going up, they're going to start tightening up, right? Kind of con con uh, contracting a little bit to prevent too much blood from getting in there. If you imagine um, if uh, you're trying to grab onto a, a pull-up bar by one hand, and hang from it, you're going to uh, want to contract the muscles of your shoulder and arm to keep that arm stable, right? If you just hang there from a very really non-contracted shoulder, you're going to feel like the muscles coming out, the, the bones coming out of joint. So same idea, blood pressure increases, the, the smooth muscle will counteract that. And then what you call long-term autoregulation, which is if you're getting a lot of blood flow to an area, you're going to make more blood vessels. This is how you actually get better at uh, running. If you go training, you go cardiovascular training, uh, aerobic training, you're going to make more blood vessels that go to your uh, to your muscles and uh, to, to keep up with the demand. It's even exaggerated more if you go to elevation and train it at an altitude. The next thing says blood flow to special areas. And these are just some select areas in the book. And uh, they include... Skeletal muscles, which experience what's called active hyperemia. Hold on, there's some noise going on. Sorry, active hyperemia. So this is what, when you get a pump on, right? Uh, blood flows there, you're gonna get a dramatic increase in the amount of blood that can go there. Your brain has to stay pretty constant. Here's some problems if, it, if the pressure goes too high or too low. Uh, you might see this fainting called syncope, I'll call it fainting. Skin can go up and down in how much blood gets there dramatically. If you uh, go outside in the heat, you're gonna turn red and the red is due to the actual blood flowing more to the skin. Same thing with exercise. If you go outside in the cold, it's gonna decrease. Uh, the lungs, of course, if you, uh, this is, by the way, this is, uh, if this is blood flow to the alveoli. So this is blood flow to the pulmonary circuit. Now this is weird because low oxygen levels in the alveoli cause vasoconstriction to those alveoli. You might think the opposite. Like if there's low oxygen, I might want to put more blood there. Think about what the pulmonary uh, system is doing, circuit is doing. It's picking up O2. So if you've got low O2 to if you're not getting a lot of oxygen into an alveolus, into a sac of, in your lungs, why would you want to send a lot of blood there? You wouldn't. You want to send a lot of blood to the areas of your lungs that are getting lots of oxygen. So this is kind of counterintuitive, but true. Your heart, the blood flow to it can go up dramatically. So your heart, if you go exercise, your heart pumps a lot more. It needs more oxygen, right? So it needs more blood to the coronary arteries besides the blood that's going through it being uh, going up. Uh, next, we go down to the capillary level and I've got a little diagram here on the next page that, that shows this. Let's see, I'm gonna show it and then I'll go back. All right, there it is, I'll go back to that. But you can see up here an arterial and a terminal arterial and then that same idea we had. Notice which way the arrows are going. Arrows are leaving the blood here at the arterial end and coming back into the blood here at the venous end. So leaking out at the artery end, leaking in at the venous end. 
First of all, blood moves very slowly through there because the the uh, the overall uh, area of the volume of the capillaries increases actually over the arterioles. So flow slows way down. Uh, stuff moves in and out. It moves in and out via diffusion mostly, and that can either be right through the membranes, so across the phospholipid layer. It can go through clefts and fenestrae, which we already showed before, and it can even get out through vesicles. So you can you can move stuff in through a vesicle, endocytosis, and then out through a vesicle on the other side, exocytosis. Now bulk flow is what was shown in that next image. Uh, and I'm gonna be very simple about it. So you have a couple of different pressures. You've got hydrostatic pressure, and you've got uh, osmotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is easy to visualize. It's literally your blood pressure. So that 120 over 80 is hydrostatic pressure. So the higher the pressures, if you think about um, like a cheesecloth, if you put some something in there and you squeeze it, the harder you squeeze, the more liquid's gonna leak out. Same thing with a sponge. So the higher the pressure, the more fluid goes across that membrane, which is why you see at the arterial end where the pressure's higher, more fluid leaving the vessels. Osmotic pressure or colloid osmotic pressure is simply um, sort of a, if you remember what osmosis is, it's movement of water across a membrane via diffusion. If you also remember another saying, uh, water follows salt. So if you've got salt on one side of membrane, water is going to tend to go towards that side. Now we're not talking about salt here. We're talking about other substances in the blood, but by the time you get to the venous end of this capillary bed and the pressure's lower, the blood inside of these tubes is concentrated. And if it's concentrated, that means water is gonna try to leak back in. So on the arterial end, hydrostatic pressure is uh, higher right here Hydrostatic pressure is higher than colloid. Osmotic pressure on the arterial end. And the opposite is true at the venual end. So hydrostatic pressure is greater than osmotic pressure at the arterial end, which means water leaks out. Colloid osmotic pressure is higher at the venual end than hydrostatic pressure, which means water leaks in. Now, interestingly, this water that leaks out, you've got more of it that leaks out than leaks in. You don't have to know the numbers here but this is what creates what's called interstitial fluid. Now interstitial fluid means in between the tissues and interstitial fluid will ultimately uh, merge with the lymphatic vessels. You see one down here, right? So there it is, interstitial fluid leaking into a lymphatic vessel, ultimately getting recycled back into your bloodstream, which we'll talk about in the uh, next chapter, I believe. Here's the last slide. There it is, system slow. Just kind of final thoughts here. Arteries run a lot deeper than your veins. You can see veins on the surface, through the surface. Uh, you still have some really deep veins, but anything shallow tends to be a uh, vein. The systemic circuit goes from the left side of the heart to the body tissues and back. Um, pulmonary circuit goes to the from the right side to the alveoli and back. So this one provides, I say, functional flow, giving stuff to the tissues. Pulmonary circuit absorbing stuff from the uh, lungs. And here's a summary table of that. I, I think I mentioned arteries were 15%, capillaries are 5%, and veins were 60%. But here we see the rest of the blood, 8% is in your heart, and the rest of it, 12%, is in your pulmonary circuit. Cool, that's it for chapter 19.